Uh, and there is this uh, bit of a push between doors to communicate with people. I mean, and we, we've had this discussion before, both team and myself, were very much uh, non dependent, but we are kind of addicted to speaking to people and interacting with people. And we usually use these platforms, and uh, we weren't so sure, you know, should we use Twitter, should we use Tika, should we explore something else? Uh, and there is always this concern that you know Google comes around with this Google Plus thing, and I think they pulled a hell of a lot of users away from the uh, from those other platforms. Mm. I, I mean, I, I think uh, on numerous occasions over the last couple of months, I've made my views quite clear, and I, I'm grimacing when I say this because Rusty's uh, on the show this time around, and there's maybe both into Google Plus, but uh, I'm certainly moving more towards. Uh, Yes, bro, yeah, uh, you, you, you may <laughs> see choice profanity the day you finally leave Google Plus, and I'm like, you know, it was only on here because blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a contagious uh, thing, isn't it? Um, well, well, the real problem is, since I've added that to that, I cannot change my Google profile back to what it is. You know, it's now forever long. Now, personally, thankfully, I put a pseudo thing in there instead of the real thing, and hopefully they don't decide, no, that's a fake name, you have to change it. But I'm like, it, there were people who loved the name I chose and put in there because they're like, I love that name. I type two characters, and you come up in my email list. And, sign, and I don't, that's not the case anymore. <laughs> Last show, we talked um, very briefly about the uh, decentralization of the desperate network and how, it, how the... Um, how that works compared to, say, Google Plus or any other social networking sites. Rusty, I don't know if you've got any opinions. I don't want to put you on the spot because I don't know if you've even looked into how Diaspora actually works. Um, but I didn't know if you had any views on, on the decentralization of a social network, uh, as in the case of uh, Diaspora. At, at, at the end of the day, I, I get the idea, you know, you own your data, your data, but I'm like, Aside from the legal ramifications, I, I get I get the tinfoil hattiness of it, but at the end of the day, if I'm putting something on the web, I'm not really expecting to own it anymore. I'm expecting I put it online and it's it's going to circle about the web, and I've kind of lost control of it, and I've just kind of accepted that. So uh, the idea is, you know, restoring it's your content, you control it. But I'm like, okay, you control a copy of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I think also, and so I don't think we mentioned last time when um, myself and Roy were talking about this. Um, obviously, with the way Di Diaspora works and uh, having pods that connect to a to a general to a general network where everybody can communicate with each other regardless of what pod they're on. Um, it does bring with it a few drawbacks, and uh, I've mentioned some of these briefly to Roy, but I've been looking at it uh, more over the last few weeks because uh, I've had the tech manuals out and I've been looking at what, uh, how the Astra actually works. Um, one thing you can say about, say, you log your details with Google Plus or, or Twitter, yes, all your data is stored with them, and yes, they hold your data to ransom effectively, I suppose, if you want to, uh, if you're going to move away and to then provide adequate provision for you taking your data with you. But the one thing that, say, Google Plus or Twitter or uh, Facebook even, do have is some level of responsibility, and I'll explain that, because if I, if Facebook or, or Twitter was to do anything which was to be counterproductive or evil, in quotes, to the end user, you can be sure that the publicity that they would get would be uh, quite harsh and damning. And I think when Facebook has uh, pulled some naughties in the past or been seen to pull some in the past. This and everybody is, complains and yeah. Zucker folks. So, so there's a level of responsibility there and uh, Facebook can't, uh, well, I say it's very loosely, but Facebook can't just do whatever it likes without having some sort of ramification in the press or uh, by word of mouth because of the nature of its uh, size and uh, profile in, in the business industry. However, with Diaspora, um, when it works with a pod system, um, there's nothing to stop me setting up my own Diaspora pod and uh, connecting to the network and having a, my own set of views. I could have Rusty, I could have Roy on my, um, my Diaspora pod. But I've got no personal responsibility. And I could then, at a whim, remove my pod from the network, delete everything and uh, take with it all of Rusty's and Roy's data. And I've really got nobody to be accountable to. 
And I think that in itself is one of the issues that we're going to come across with this decentralization and that is facilitated with the diaspora. In that Personally, if you're going to do decentralization, I like the approach to decentralization where it, it's, it's not stored on any one computer. It's yeah. truly decentralized so that, okay, suddenly this node disappears. That's okay. The network can reconstruct the missing bits over the next day. Yeah, and that's, that, that's not how this story has that, been that's built. That's what Freedom Box is supposed to be doing. Uh, it involves the former CTO of Canonical and also the uh, Ebit Moglin, who's uh, one of the SF people and SFLC people. Uh, and the, it, it's kind of reminiscent of, in some ways, of the, uh, of the way Usenet works, I guess. But then again, with, with openness and with decentralization also comes abuse and less of a control over that abuse. Um, I mean, I, think we're, I, I can't remember now whether we said this, we just had a brief chat pre-show whether we actually mentioned our show, but Usenet is a prime example where you take, you take something, an ecosystem where you've got people contributing different opinions on a wide variety of subjects and then you have Google groups pop up and then spam starts coming in and it all becomes a bit of a free-for-all. And there's plenty of unmoderated groups which over the last year or so have become just a complete mess. And the enjoyment of those groups has been uh, has been affected by being so unmoderated or open. And so I think well, it's a double-edged that, sword. That's one of the compromises you have to make in general, mm. even in society, when you decide, well, let's let's not try to crush people who want to protest and want to like go around the streets with megaphones, because while it, it will upset some people. But if you try well, to you know, we, we've come full circle to where we started. I mean, I, I personally think they're pricks, but I'm not going to sit here and shut the Baptists up for, you know, hating. I think they're being thoroughly inappropriate, but I believe they have the right to be thoroughly inappropriate. Pricks! <laughs> now, only you could make a blocking system where on an individual basis you could decide if somebody is being basically a, an, an asshole. Uh, you could decide, well, I don't want to receive any messages from that person based on my settings that are based locally on my machine in the same way well and that, that that's pretty much what google plus has done where you can go in there and go you know what don't unadd this person but just mute them shut them up and put them in this other feed over here and they'd never know i did it you know yeah and control for the user all the censorship is one of those things we talk about uh when we uh when we talk about censorship in general based on domain names so you just say, well, if, if I don't, if I want censorship, I'll do it on my PC, on my desktop. I don't want BT to do it for me. I don't want the government to do it for me. And they don't really need the uh, ICE chasing down and shutting down websites based on its own value somewhere in the states and deciding, well, you cannot have that. And it doesn't belong in DNS. Like if I want to access this stuff. I, I, I agree with you. If it's going to happen, it should be the individual's choice. I'm not this big, huge fan of censorship because I, I see people do this all the time. They make an opinion, and then they only go talk to people who share their opinion, and they never really examine their opinion or look at it, and it, they they just basically live in a little, you know, dome and go, yeah, my, I live in my world, and the reality never penetrates because I only live in my world. <laughs> I mean, it's great if they want to do that, but it, it's kind of sad to watch, too. And that's that's because they're censoring themselves, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I think uh, it's a very double-edged sword uh, for me personally. I, I believe in people's freedom of speech uh, and the freedom to express themselves, however. Well, I, I, I'm talking about the reverse thing. Like, there are people walking around the planet right now who would make sure their kids never hear about evolution. Because of they, you know, for some reason or another, and I'm like, that's kind of a disservice to their kids if we don't pierce the veil of evolution bad and you know, it says your kids, hey, have you ever heard about this thing called evolution? I'm just bringing that up as an example because that's something people would do that, um, which most people would agree, you know, their kids should hear about evolution and make up their minds themselves, you know. But then it's it's, it's very difficult in reality, you know. When you hold a view on either creationism or uh, evolution, um, you're going to hold your own personal opinion, and that personal opinion is going to be the one that obviously you agree with, and that's what you're going to pass on to your children or want them to uh, to, to believe as well. It's uh, 
it is a very, there was an article, it was on the radio recently, it's, I don't know whether there's been a, something in the States that's sort of kicked all this off, but there was a, a whole show of um, about this whole topic on the radio recently, my local radio, um, fascinating subject. Um, whereas the reality is you can be somewhere in between and actually believe in both and uh, still...